What's going on guys? My name is The Glacier and I'm a one trick Garen main that claimed rank 20 Garen NA in top 150 in the world with this champion. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my way of playing Garen that I have consistently used to climb multiple accounts into high platinum and even into low diamond. This is a style that I've personally created and perfected specifically for climbing ELO, so sit back and relax and get ready to learn how to actually win a game with Garen. Alright now for the runes, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run 8 flat attack damage reds. For your quints, you're going to want to run 3 flat AD quints. For your yellows, you're going to want to run all flat armor. And then finally for the blues, you're going to want to run 6 CDR per level and then 3 MR per level. And the reasoning behind this setup is flat AD is just going to give you that early game power that you're looking for. The 1% crit chance is, is maybe going to give you some luck here and there. And the 10% cooldown reduction is going to pair very nicely with the items that you're going to be building on Garen. Alright, for your mastery page, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run 12 points in ferocity and 18 points in cunning. Now the whole point of this mastery page is to simply enhance your early game, make you very dominant in lane, allow you to snowball effectively so that you can split push efficiently. You're going to be running Storm Raider Surge for your main keystone, I would say probably around 95% of the time. Uh, it honestly, in my opinion, is the most effective keystone. It performs a lot better than Fervor of Battle and Grasp of the Undying. Fervor of Battle is great, it gives you a lot of dueling potential in lane, but it doesn't give you any mobility, which really sucks. Also, Grasp of the Undying makes your early game presence a lot weaker and no mobility. Running Intelligence over Precision is going to give you that extra 5% cooldown reduction, which is very, very important when you are doing the split pushing path. Green Father's Gift, Double Edged Sword, and Sorcery are all going to work together to give you very, very powerful Q poke damage in lane. Now, like I said, this is the mastery page I have ran consistently all the way from a Bronze 5 account all the way to Diamond 5. It works consistently in every single elo, and I highly recommend that you run this keystone over any other one at least 95% of the time. So for your starting items, you have three choices. The first one being a Longsword 3, which you're going to want to take against the lane that you know you're going to have high kill potential against, and you know that you're going to be dueling them a lot. The second item being a Doran Shield with one potion against a difficult matchup with minimal poke. Or finally a Cloth Armor in four potions against a heavy damage poke lane like Pantheon. Also I want to mention that the champions that are shown on screen are just a few examples of the times when you should build that item. Personally I typically almost always start Longsword 3 because I know my limits of my champion and it gives me the early damage that I want as well as a lot of sustain. As for your summoner spells. You're going to want to run Flash Ignite every single game regardless of the matchup for early kill pressure as well as the early roaming potential. Ignite is almost always the better choice, but I cannot argue that running Teleport in certain situations can be useful, especially against hard counter lanes like Renekton or Teemo. So unfortunately Garen has been given a very bad reputation because of a lot of people really not understanding Garen's fullest potential. I build and play Garen as a split pushing assassin by building a Yomu's Ghost Blade, Trinity Force, Sterex Gauge, and a Guardian's Angel. These four items are going to be the most optimal items to build in terms of pushing power, burst damage, and survivability. Now the most important thing to understand about this is knowing exactly when to build this combination of items. If you are ever able of taking on your top lane opponent as well as the enemy jungler without any issues, then this is the time to take full advantage of the split push Garen build. However, there will be many situations where you will be unable to do so. If this is the case, then Trinity Force is a very bad choice. After building Yomus, consider building either a Black Cleaver to shred your armor stacking opponents, or an Infinity Edge to quickly take down any squishy opponents. Now if you end up falling behind in lane, the simplest thing to do is build the resistances you need to survive the rest of the lane phase. If you happen to be against a very heavy AP laner, consider rushing a Spirit Visage. If you're against a heavy AD laner, consider rushing either a Randuin Zomen or a Deadman's Plate with the Ninja Tabby combination. You can still build Black Cleaver for your second or third item once you have purchased these items. Learning how to build optimally really just requires knowledge of your champion's capabilities and a little common sense. For example, if you're against a team with a whole lot of magic damage, then you just need to stack MR. 
And the same goes against heavy AD comps, just stack armor. A little tip I learned a long time ago from a high elo player was to simply look at the enemy team comp and figure out from level 1 what you're going to have to build against them to win the game. So the skill max order is going to be E, Q, W, then R. The only time you should ever really be maxing out your Q instead of your E first is if you plan on just poking the hell out of the enemy with your Q instead of actually fighting them. Q is only going to give you poke damage while your E is going to give you that all-in and dueling potential. I personally prefer to max my E every single game so that I can quickly push lanes when I want to split or roam. Okay, so now you know every single thing you need to know before you actually get into the game. Now let's move on to the gameplay. So let's talk about what your objective is. On Garen, your objective is really simple. Play Garen as a split pushing assassin and always be applying pressure while looking for kills in the enemy's jungle. All right, now let's talk about what to do in the lane phase from level one. So Garen is all about establishing a lead from level one. The way to do this is very simple. Use your Q silence to poke the enemy and run away repeatedly. The correct way to go about doing this is to use the brush to stay hidden from the enemy laner. Not only are they unable to attack you, but the minions will not aggro you once you run back into the brush. Continue to poke the enemy while always looking for a chance to go for an all-in with your E and Ignite combo. The more aggressive you are with your brush tactics, the faster and easier it's going to be for you to kill your opponent and take control of the lane. Once you hit level 6, you have reached an incredible power spike on Garen, and now it is time to take full advantage of it. As a level 6 Garen with Flash and Ignite, you will be able to quickly burst down just about any champion in the game. If you are unable to continue to dominate your lane, simply push in the enemy creep wave under the enemy tower and look to roam into the jungle or to mid lane to try and pick off some kills. A very important part of this strategy is to have constant vision control. This means picking up a red trinket at level 9 and always having multiple control words on you at all times. This is going to allow you to take over the enemy jungle and maintain constant aggression on the top side of the map. After you take the tier 1 tower, it's time to start looking to take the tier 2. Place a control ward in this exact brush. All you're going to do now is push top until you can't push anymore. Then you're going to go to mid lane and do the exact same thing. Essentially, you're going to be applying pressure in both mid and top at the same time. All while looking to pick off enemies roaming through their top side jungle with the help of that control ward you placed in the brush. Now on to the late game portion of the game. This is where things are going to start to become difficult. After you have taken the top and mid tier 2 towers, it's time for you to do one of two things. The first play I like to make that works most of the time is to tell my team to group S4 while I split push in the bottom lane. Now we all know how much low elo players love to chase and go after kills. And that's exactly what we're going to take advantage of in this strategy. Communicate with your team to clear out the Baron pit of vision and when the enemy team comes for you, and they will, do Baron. Your job is very simple. Push all the way to the inhibitor tower in the bottom lane and play around with the enemies long enough to distract them so that your team can secure Baron. The other strategy is going to be just to group with your team if your team is not too far behind and you can actually win a team fight. Your job on Garen in team fights is to one shot the carry that is most fed. Very, very easy to do if you flash on them at the right time. They won't be able to deal with your one and a half second silence or your burst, especially if they're the villain. All right, now let's talk a little bit about split pushing and how to actually do it. The whole point behind split pushing is that you're forcing the enemy team to have to deal with you so they are unable to group and take objectives together. After you have taken the enemy tier one tower, this is where the split pushing begins. The first step is to establish very good vision control with the pink ward placement I showed you earlier in the guide. This ward is going to allow you to split safely and not die to every single gank. The next step is to shove the wave into the enemy tower. Now you have two options here. The first option is to dive your opponent and take the tower. However, if the enemy jungler is not seen, then the next option is to push mid lane then come back to top and rinse and repeat until there is an opportunity to take a tower. While you are transitioning from top to mid, you should be looking to pick off anyone that walks through the jungle by sitting in the brush that you have warded. If you are able to pick off the jungler, then it's going to give you that opportunity you were looking for to dive and take the tower. 
After the tier 2 top and mid towers are gone, it's time for the Baron strategy you learned in the late game section of the guide. Go on the bottom side of the map and do the exact same thing you did on the top side. Okay, now let's go on to some difficult matchups that can actually be won if played correctly. The first matchup we're going to talk about is Trindamir. And surprisingly, this is actually a very easy lane to win if you know what you're doing. So this lane is going to be all about taking very small trades. The longer you fight a Trin, the more chances you're giving him to crit on you. As soon as you get to lane level 1, you need to be running in and out of that brush and slapping the hell out of him with your Qs. You do not want him to stack up his fury for free. Every single time he autos a minion, you need to be hitting him and running into the brush repeatedly. The next step is to run in and use your Q, then begin to spin. As soon as you proc your Storm Raider Surge, just run away. He won't be able to slow you or use his E to catch up to you because you'll be unslowable and you'll be too fast because of Storm Raider's Surge. This same principle can be applied and can be abused when he hits level 6 to bait out his ultimate. Okay, let's talk about Pantheon. For this matchup, you're going to want to start with a Cloth Armor and 4 Health Potions. This is going to help you sustain and last hit safely in lane. The secret to winning this lane is to stay healthy and wait for him to make mistakes. The one thing you really need to pay close attention to in your lane is your cannon minion. The cannon minion is so important because if it attacks Pantheon it will remove his shield, which is going to allow you to successfully land a Q and win a trade or even kill him. Let's talk about the Fiora matchup. This matchup can be so frustrating if you end up making even the tiniest mistake. This lane is going to come down to who can be more aggressive and dominant in lane. Every time Fiora goes in for a vital, make sure that you are sitting in your creep wave and immediately trade her with an auto Q combination to win or break even on the trade. After level 2, it's all about paying attention and keeping track of Fiora's Repost. Repost is an ability with a 24 second cooldown at rank 1 that will negate every single ability you throw at her and will stun or slow you as well. The secret is to use your Q first, but spin instead of leading with your Q. This way you can bait out her repost and win the trade. Just remember to be patient and keep track of her repost and go for the all-in whenever it's on cooldown. Now on to the Jax matchup. So for your starting items in this matchup, you're going to want to start with a Doran shield to reduce the damage behind his auto attacks. Jax is a tricky lane because you can't just run at him and Q him like every other lane because he will simply negate it and out-trade you with his Counter-Strike. The way you will win trades against him is to try baiting him into jumping on top of you in your creep wave. Whenever he does this, use your W and your E. This will tank the brunt of the damage and once you're out of his stun, you can simply use your Q to catch back up to him and win the trade. The farther you can bait him into jumping on you away from his tower, the better it will be for you. Final matchup of this guide, we're going to be talking about Darius, and this is one of the more difficult matchups to win, but again, if done correctly, it can be super simple. Most low elo Darius players always tend to start Q. If this is the case, all you're going to do level 1 is use your brush tactics to slap him with as many Qs as possible. There are two important things you need to remember while doing this. One is you have to stand directly on top of Darius whenever he uses his decimate, otherwise you are going to lose every single trade. The second thing to remember is that you do not win extended trades against Darius, ever. You will simply be poking him and disengaging with Storm Raiders whenever you can. Once level 3 hits, you won't be able to do this anymore, so the secret here is to try to bait out his abilities, and when he wastes them, go for the trade. Another little tip is whenever he pulls you in, make sure to wait until after he W's you to press Q and negate his slow. This way you can stand directly on top of him when he tries to Q you. If you are able to do this, then you will win all of the trades, no problem. So I thought it'd be a good idea for me to list off 6 of the most difficult champions for Garrett to play against in the top lane. Um, against these 6 champions, I highly recommend either dodging the game or playing super passive and running teleport, maybe even lane swapping to mid if you can, because all six of these champions are almost impossible to go against if the player is experienced on them in any way, shape, or form. So in no specific order, it's going to be Teemo, Kale, Pantheon, Rumble, Kennen, and Renekton. As for some tips and tricks on Garen, 
the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to constantly want to be going for solo kills in the enemy jungle after you've cleared it with your red trinket and your control wards. Garen has a huge advantage because of his 1.5 second silence. He's able to burst virtually any squishy opponent down before they even have time to react. The second thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you are always using your Q as an auto attack reset. The third thing is you can use your Q, then the full duration of your E, and then finish the combination off with your Q slap. This makes for a very powerful trade if an opponent is directly on top of you. Number four is know when to split push and when not to. If your team is unable to hold off the enemy from sieging, then just group with your team and stop split pushing. If your team is ahead, then just group with them and close out the game. Don't split push when you're behind. And the fifth and final thing is don't be so quick to use your health potions in lane. I cannot tell you how frustrating this is to see watching or coaching anyone that is playing Garen. And they have three health potions and they're doing fine in lane. And they just are constantly chugging and wasting their health potions when all they have to do is just, you know, play a little back and let their, let their passive do work. Guys, your passive is powerful as hell. Let it do its job. Let it heal you back to full HP. There's no need for you to be chugging those potions every two seconds, okay? Alright, so let's recap a little bit on what we learned today on this guide. So, you learned a new playstyle of Garen. You learned that Garen can be played like a man, an assassin, a split pusher, and overall an elo climbing machine. That's exactly what you should be doing with Garen. Garen can still be played as the traditional tanky bruiser with the black cleaver and the, the traditional tanky build, of course, but I believe I have proven this build countless times on stream, videos, rank, etc. that this is the way to play Garen, um, if not the best way to play Garen. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching my Garen guide. I really hope that you guys slap that like button for me. Hit that sub button, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.